African Television as well as YouTube at Pan African Television. We are also live on 48 African countries. You can join in the conversation by sending in your views, comments, and contributions on our WhatsApp stroke text line displayed on the screen. We'll make a time and read all those out for you. Those of you watching us on Facebook can share the Facebook Live for other people to also watch tonight's edition of the program. Tonight on Hot News, we are looking at uh, you know, some few issues. Uh, one of those issues we'll be looking at is the benchmark, you know, value, um, the suspension of it by this government. You know that earlier, government wanted to reverse, you know, that policy which was introduced in 2019. But uh, all the associations, the unions, uh, the trade unions have spoken against it. Some have described it as insensitive and callous. Uh, which the National Democratic Congress uh, has also added their voice to that and all of that. And so the president, Nana Dankwa Kufuado, instructed the Ghana Revenue Authority to suspend the reversal of the benchmark value and all of that. We'll be looking at that particular issue on the show. We'll also be looking at the current state of Ghana's educational you know, system and all of that, the challenges, the problems, the way forward, and all those things. We've been joined in the studio by the um, Deputy National Youth Organizer of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, Adem Agbana. We are expecting uh, the PR for Ministry of Education, Kwesi Kwatin, also in the studio. As and when he joins us, he'll be part of the discussion. But anyway, well, let me, let me engage Adam right here on, on the show, on the topics we've tabled out. But Adam, how are you doing? It's been a, it's been a while. Yes, Justice, uh, good evening mm. to you and to our viewers across the, the world. Right. Let me say Happy New Year to everyone who is joining us this evening. Mm. And I'm very happy that in this new year, we are alive and we are back on your set. Mm. Justice, the new year usually signifies the beginning of great things. And right. people begin the year with high hopes mm. and expectations. People begin the year with resolutions, seeking to improve on their personal lives, their career, and what have you. People begin the new year hoping that they will correct mistakes that they made in the previous years mm. and make the new year a better one and the years to come uh, uh, a more excellent one. <clears throat> Unfortunately for us Ghanaians, the good people of Ghana, we have a leadership that is so determined to get worse than they were in the previous years. Mm. And so all around the world, people, citizens were ushered into the new year by their respective governments with task cards, policies that will bring jobs, relief to the people, things that will improve upon the economy and all of that. But in Ghana, we have been ushered into the new year with more hardship, strike actions, and, 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 and all the negativities that you can think about. And so it's really been a rough start to the new year. And so I will take the point one after the other, mm. while hoping mm. that my brother Kwesi Kwatin will be able to join us this evening. Right. I understand that speaking for the Akufado government today is the most unattractive job in the world. I see. Because I cannot imagine myself in the shoes of the NPP mm. communicators speaking for this government, mm. this mess of a government, a government that is performing so abysmally that even little children, little children are making mockery of the kind of leadership that we have. So it is difficult to now be an MPP communicator or a spokesperson for this government in any sector. And so I understand why either they deliberately come for shows late or they choose not to even appear at all because it is not easy to speak for this mess of a government led by Akufado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. 
Justice, as we speak, in this week, students are reporting in the various tertiary institutions. Mm. And fresh students are faced with series of challenges. Mm. Number one, there is industrial strike actions all around. It includes UTAC, the University mm. Teachers Association of Ghana. And so the primary responsibility or the primary reason why anyone will be in school is to study. Right. And the people to offer that service of teaching before you, the student, at the receiving end will learn are on strike. And so the beginning of their university year, something that they have spent years looking forward to, they are starting on this, this, this bad note. What kind of future leaders are we going to breed in such an environment? Apart from that, we have had issues with accommodation mm. across the campuses. To be fair, accommodation issues did not start today. I was about to in this government. That, that yes. Since yes. Did this issue, it did not I mean, start. It, 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 it did not start. Today. It did not start with the Akufado government. Right. However, every government in the past has contributed to ensuring that even before the students report in school, some preparations are made such that the problem is not as scary as we have it Are you saying that today. this government has contributed nothing? Nothing was done. No preparations went into... Yeah, no preparations, nothing. Mm. So I will give you a typical example. What we are having today, the problems we are having today, <clears throat> yeah. is not just an age-long problem that they inherited. It is also as a result of the fact that, as we speak today, nobody can speak confidently and say he or she has an idea what Ghana's educational sector, the calendar, looks like. Mm. Because as we speak, we don't know what time school students are reporting at the basic level. Sometimes they report in school, they are told that they will stay in school for three months. Mm. And by the second month, there is a release that you are supposed to go home. We are playing just killing with the educational system. The education of our children is, 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 is at stake. But this government has played politics, pure partisan politics, propaganda, with the educational system such that, as we speak today, we are in crisis. We are in crisis. If, if it has to take the Minister of Education mm. to come and say, we don't even have an idea when students are reporting in school at the basic level. We are in crisis because... Every sector, every level of our education is being affected by this incompetence, ineptitude, lack of proper planning, and the lack of leadership that we are seeing today. So justice, that is just one mm. of the areas. In the area of the economy, 17th of January, no, let, let, let's stay on education. A okay, bit. we can stay on education. On, you, you mentioned that of the UTAC strike. Yes. This is also not the first time, you know, UTAC is embarking on strike. Under the National Democratic Congress, UTAC had embarked on several strikes and all of that. Are you saying that That's it was as a result of no. bad management of the, you know, the economy? It was as a result of bad governance by your government. That's how come UTAC... You know, very important start. question mm. that you ask. And just as let me say that even in the very advanced economies mm. or democracies, we have incidents of strike actions mm. or protests by workers or labor unions. Right. And so it is not unique to Ghana. Mm. Again, this is not the first time UTAC is embarking on strike. And this is not the first time, and I'm sure this will not be the last time, UTAC will embark on a strike action. Right. But what makes this strike unique is the fact that mm. you can solely blame the teachers, the lecturers going on strike at this time on the deceptive politics of the Akufado government. In 2013, when UTAC embarked on strike, it was for government not to abolish the 
book and research allowance and replace it with the special research fund. Mm. So that was a government or a policy direction that UTAC opposed. And it is not new that in every country you have workers opposing one or two economic policies or policies that are intended to shape their sector. Mm. And so there was nothing wrong with UTAC demanding that the government then proposed the abolishment or the removal of the book and research allowance and replacing it with a special research fund. So that was just a, poli a matter of policy disagreement. But UTAC members were receiving their salaries. They were receiving all other allowances. It was the book and research allowance that was a matter of contention between the labor unions and the government. But where we are today, what is happening is that government have a report, okay? Government had a report that they are supposed to implement, which will increase salaries and some allowances for UTAC members and improve upon their conditions of service. Government refused to implement the recommendations of the report. The lecturers decided to embark on strike. And I want you to pay key attention to this aspect mm. and why I am supporting this, the strike action by UTAC. Last year, when they decided to embark on strike, the vice president of the republic called them and said, oh, don't subject our students to these fluctuations in academic calendar. Mm. Let's come to the table. Whatever concerns you have, we will address it. The vice president made specific promises what to UTAC members that all their demands will be met. And so they called off the strike. And I read a long article from my former lecturer and friend, Dr. Ransford Jampo. Mm eulogizing Dr. Baumia for his intervention in ending the strike action. A few weeks later, all the promises that the Vice President made to UTAC, for which reason they called off the strike, these promises were not fulfilled. And it means that they were deceived. That is the kind of deceptive leadership that we are talking about. In the past, there has never been an inter a situation where Workers embarked on strike. The president or vice president called them to the table and say, suspend the strike, get back to the classroom. We are resolving your issues, so we we'll resolve your issues. Then weeks or months after, the government failed to do that. And so they extended the deceptive politics, the same politics and mindset, which allows them to go from community to community, cutting sword, without actually executing or constructing the whatever they have gone to cut the sword for. The same deceptive politics which made Akufuado announce on national television that they were embarking on Agenda 111 and that the construction will begin the day after his announcement. And yet we are yet to see blocks on the ground for that agenda. The same deception that made Akufuado promise the people of Ghana, you recall that there was a time he promised school children that they were even going to be getting chocolate every week. Right. <clears throat> the same deceptive politics. So they deceive the lecturers, <clears throat> our lecturers, the people who taught them. Is it all the things you told Ghanaians that you were able to do when you are when you were in government? I will give you an example. Did Look, you do all the things you no, promised Ghana? but I will tell you something. Let me tell you before what, you were voted for. Let me for. tell you what the difference is. For example, in 2008, mm. the Mills Mahama <clears throat> candidate Chao, the NDC at the time, promised to introduce the one-time payment for the National Health Insurance Scheme. Right. You recall that promise. Mm. When we came into office in 2009, and realize that the implementation of the single spine salary structure, which led eh, to a surge in, I mean, improvement in salary levels 
and trying to bridge the disparity that existed between workers at the time had taken so much toll on the 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 the, 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 the national funds. President Mills, as honest and sincere as he was, God bless his soul, came back to the people of Ghana and said, mm. I promised you one term payment for national health insurance levy. But as we speak, we speak the one term premium, we cannot do it for reason A, B, C, and D. But in this case, under Akufuado, we continue to see new promises every now and then when the old ones have not been fulfilled and they come back with no explanations or whatsoever to the good people of Ghana. And so that is where the difference is. That is, it is only natural, only human, that even in a home, a man and a woman are married. A parent, you can even make promises to your own children, but you may encounter some challenges. But the mark of leadership and the mark of a good parent will be that come back to the people and tell them why you are unable to provide what you promised. Then they will understand. You carry them along. Mm. But in this case, the deceptive politics has become the methodology because that is what they keep employing on a daily basis. I see. And so you lie to you tag members, got them to call off the strike, and here we are back to square one. All the things you promised them, you have not been able to fulfill. And so that is why we have this challenge that we have today. Mm. And justice, quite apart from that, you ask yourself, what are the UTAC members asking for? What is it? There is nothing criminal or wrong or unjustifiable about what UTAC members are asking for. They are only asking for improvement in their conditions of service. Mm. And justice, I am a politician and I pray that one day God will bless me to, 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 to do the politics for a long time, to be able to contribute to the development of this country. But I am against the huge disparity that exists currently between Article 71 office holders and other public sector workers. Mm. Justice. The people who are suffering. Since when have you been against it? That is, I have consistently spoken against Even Article when you were in power. Yes. It, it, because it yes. was the same when you were is in that, power. The, the, the only difference Why have that, you now found The only voice? difference is that maybe at the time, my voice may not have reached your platform mm. because at the time, maybe I wasn't a member of the national. But I can show you evidence of articles I have written post I have made even on my social media mm. talking about the disparity that exists between Article 71 office holders and other public sector workers. Right. That is simply not fair. So when you tell us that things are hard, times are hard, we should tighten our belt, be nationalistic in our expectations and not expect too much in terms of salary increments. Then, behind this promise or this pledge, mm. this admonishment, you have members of government led by their self-styled Arabian king president, President Akufado, always lavishly spending and wasting taxpayers' money. 129000 being spent on Christmas tree. Over 15,000 pounds an hour being spent on rented luxurious private jets. And so the lecturers are seeing these things. The workers are seeing these things. Salaries are not seeing any significant increment. You continue to spend and spend uh, uh, on yourselves. Uh, are you advocating for lecturers to be treated like the president is treated in this country? Is that what you you're calling? You members are not asking to be treated as the but you have mentioned the president's you tag members you are not asking uh, you know christmas trees that were you tag members are that. not asking that, that, what you're that during for? christmas or during the yuli type mm. give them one twenty nine thousand ghana cities to spend on christmas trees for you tag mm. they are only asking for basic improvement in their salary structure conditions okay. of service the point is that when the president who must show leadership okay to the people of ghana decides to be spending lavishly. The profligacy is so much. Mm. And yet keeps calling on the people of Ghana 
They already overburdened people who are paying taxes to expect minimal increment in salaries mm. when you continue to increase yours and enjoy what do you expect from them. That's it. As we speak today, the Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian is going through so much economic hardship. In a few days' time, we'll be experiencing 17% increment in fuel prices. Yeah. You are aware of that? Mm, very well. 17% increment in transport fares. The unions have already announced that from 17, we should expect that. As we speak, Right from 1st January 2022, all government charges and services have gone up by 15%. So if you were transacting a business at a government hospital, okay, and you were paying, say, 100,000 Ghana cities or 100 cities, it has gone up to 115 Ghana cities. 15%. Mm. It affects schools hospitals and all other government services and charges when you are seeking passport birth certificate what have you 15 percent again new taxes have been imposed on the good people of ghana in the last budget then this reversal of the benchmark values mm. discounted benchmark values is also going to lead to 30 to 50 percent increment in import duties a cost which will definitely be trans transferred to the final consumer so that's it when you look at all of these and you look at how the president and his government are behaving you will agree with me that UTAC members are justified in well, calling some, for better conditions of service some people think that the national democratic congress is only good at identifying problems without preferring any solution to the problems they have identified and somebody has just espoused that through a message sent on Facebook that you are only talking about problems you have identified without any, any solution what are the alternatives that is when I that hear providing as when a I hear when I hear the NPP folks say NDC is not providing alternatives and all of mm. that my reaction is usually um, very simple one it is an indication that those in power the people we voted for mm. who claim that they have the men actually do not have the men and they are clueless i see they are clueless because if you are not clueless you will not be seeking for alternative policy propositions mm. from the opposition party two Apart from the fact that they are clueless, they also don't read. They I don't see. read. Because like President Muhammad directed Akufuado to read the NDC's manifesto, mm. all these issues that we have espoused, we have alternative policies contained in the manifesto. Besides that, the only alternative to the challenges we face today is a change in leadership. Because... A fish only gets rotten from the head. We are where we are today because leadership is failing and leadership has failed. Mm. And so, don't talk to me about giving you alternatives. It is about replacing the inept, the incompetent, the lazy, the corrupt family and friends government that we have in place. People have said, and sometimes people make the joke out of it that the Flagstaff House is almost becoming a, a crime scene because that is where all the deals are cooked. I see. So I'm saying that, yes, we have policies we have been talking about all the time. But beyond that, the solution begins with changing the leadership that we have because the people there who we voted for, or the people of Ghana who they claim they voted for them, those people, Akufado, Baumia and Co. Dr. Baumia and Co. This, this government that we have in place. But, but this government also, also thinks that they have achieved, or, you know, or they have chalked some successes when it comes well, to what education in this country. Well, they may have... The free senior high school policy have, oh, implementation. Please, please. You see... Uh, the restoration see, of 
the teacher training see, and nurses training allows you see, is it, uh, is it, let, let me tell you, I have As always, successes they've talked. I have always maintained. Have you seen their V blocks? I mean, I that, have always, that are being sprinkled all, I have all always over, maintained you know, that, in this country. I have always maintained that this government is it's, it's, it's talk more, do nothing government. I see. Nothing government. It's a government that always chooses form over substance. Let's go into the various policies that they claim that are their successes. Mm. You see, they will talk about NAPCO. What is the state of NAPCO today? No, even talk of the... NAPCO you know, recruits are crying sector. for payment. I have given you some success. I will come to the educational sector. The edu educational talk, sector. To the free, mm. talk about free SHS. Yes. As we speak, and I will challenge you and your producers and any educationist listening to me, that go and conduct a basic research, mm. and 85% of Ghanaians will tell you that, 85% of the wards will tell you that, they will prefer the old system, where they will pay and know that they are getting quality. That's this. I have a sibling in one of the senior high schools in, in, in Accra here. One of the prestigious schools. Look, school resumes today. She packs bag and luggage that I'm going to school. In three weeks time, she calls you and says that, oh, uh, we're full of they, they said uh, 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 we, are, we are supposed to go on vacation. This yellow, red, green, whatever track that they have, that has brought so much instability in our educational system. It's affecting the quality of education that they are rendering to the kids. These criticisms are not new so, when it comes to the first school policy. But as we speak today, but... The we even have a situation where the students don't even know where they are going. But the performance of these students, you know, of course, is so different from the criticisms. I mean, that you, That's have, you see, you've done so. One bad. of the biggest mm -hmm. deceptions and the greatest disservice we will be doing to the good people of Ghana is when you even want to judge the performance of the free SHS by this. Wasi results. Mm. Why, 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 yes, why, why can't we do that? The Wasi results are terrible. I have seen it. When you do the proper statistics, mm. the results are terrible. I see. But beyond the results being terrible, I am looking at the fact that that is, look at what happened during the examination period. What happened? President Akufado sponsored a training or capacity building workshop for teachers. Some were hosted in K University, University of Ghana, UCC, and all of that. Mm. And guess what the training was about? They were simply handed past questions. And they said, take these past questions, and the questions are going to come from there. The president was so petty that he descended to the, to the level where he said, go and pass your exams to shame your detractors. What was the focus of the exam then? When government is going to be involved in the, I mean, the entire process. Past questions given. We saw how exam, examination questions leaked all over the place. They were writing the exam as if it was received because by the time they start the paper or the days, weeks even before the paper, we all saw what was happening on social media. How their questions flooded social media and all of that. How will you use these things as a standard? Standard. That's a standard to judge education of any serious country. These are not the, 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 the measures, or these are not the things that you use, the mechanisms that you use to check that. And so, as of free SHS, we all know and we must admit it is a failed policy. This has helped a lot of homes. That is, kids... And that is, when you check the to MS data, there is something beautiful school. about data. Mm. What, 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 what when you go to the about? Ministry of Education, mm. there is what we call the Education Management Information System, MS data, mm. systems data, right? When you check that data, every year, with or without free SHS, enrollment to our senior high schools mm increased by 20 to 30 percent and so there was no significant increment are you telling me that the number of students admitted in 2009 mm. was the same as those admitted in 2010 was there not an increment 
Certainly, there, there, will, there will always be an increment. Mm. Why? So it is not the free SHS alone that is accounting for that increment. But the free SHS has contributed secondly, to a significant secondly, increment. What is the difference when it comes to the free SHS? Let me tell you one thing that a lot of analysts always miss this point. Mm. And when some of us make this point, people think that we are being too controversial. That's it. The only thing that resulted in the increment in the numbers is not necessarily free SHS. It is because they lowered the standards. When I completed junior high school, I was aware that if I had aggregate 6 to 30, I qualified to be placed in a secondary school. So the BEC became a stop government. It was, it was, it was, it was a leveler. Now, that affected a lot of students. So those who did not get 30 mm. would either go to private schools or they would wait and re-register with another school. Right. That is why the NDC government under President Mahama, the visionary, the one who thinks about every single policy meticulously before implementing, decided to introduce the BC receipt policy. Mm. But guess what happened? So when the APP came and they introduced free SHS, now, even when you have aggregate 52, you are placed to a school. So, that will lead naturally to an increment in number. But again, what it means also is that the standards have been lowered. Mm. So, it is not as if the biggest problem of the Ghanaian parent at the time was the payment of fees. It was issues about access and all that. That is why we were introducing the community day schools to increase expand access. So just this, this government is just embarking on policies with no concrete plan. But talk of no policy of document. Uh, this government, you know, has started, you know, the construction of the V blocks and all of that. I don't know if you've seen, you know, the, the designs, you've seen the schools and all of that. This government has also said that they have restored the teacher training and nurses training allowances and all of that. The, the, the same allowance that you had scrapped and all of that. I mean, can't you just credit this government for some of these successes, chopped? Yes, yes. <laughs> when the NDC was leaving power in 2017, we did not hand over designs of classroom blocks. Mm -hmm. To the Akufuado government, we handed over 75 completed community day senior high schools. That was contested. They said 75 it wasn't completed. 75. They said you, you completed about 23 of them. Also. 75 completed, mm. and various others at different stages of completion. Right. And so, in all, we had 123 that we started, almost. All of them were completed. I see. The 75 that today, because of petty politics they are contesting, is the figure that even the Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Matthew Poku Prempen Napo himself affirmed. And so today you hear Dr. Baromia say we did 43. Another government uh, min, um, cabinet minister says it's 46. Some say it's 23. Some actually said it's only 10 that we completed. So even if you look at their contradiction, we have stuck to our figure. Right. And we provided names of those communities Very well. where those schools were constructed. These designs that they have, and they are showing all over the place that it is their new community day schools or school complex that they are building. Look, when we decided to eradicate schools under trees and eradicate the shift system in Accra, you saw the millennial school buildings that we built all over the city. Go to Baalishi. You see the Millennium School. I did a part of my junior high school education at Baaleshi, La Baaleshi Presby right. GSS. It was a dilapidated uh, uh, structure. That structure was simply bad. But today, they have a Millennium School. Thanks to the visionary leadership of the NDC. Okay. Right. So, let, let, it is let, not let about design. It. Even, the free SA, the, even the community day schools that we started, complete them before you move on to your whatever V, whatever complex. You cannot even complete. This is 
This is the kind of leadership that we have in place. Vera, Vera, Vera viewers, you're, you're still watching hot lack of vision on Afghan television and the lead, leadership yeah. that is unable to back their words with action. Right. You're still watching Hot News Radio on Pan African Television with me, Justice Sophia. Um, I'll be reading few of a few of your messages on uh, on Facebook, but um, and, um, we have some few minutes. Your party, the National Democratic Congress, held a press conference on yeah. the uh, suspension of the reverse. No, it was on the reversal of the benchmark values. Uh, it was after that the president instructed that yeah. he was suspended and all of that. What's your issue with the reversal of the benchmark value, NDC? Oh, that's this. I have said on many platforms, mm. and I'll repeat it here again tonight, that the Akufado government operates with the methodology of a smart pickpocket. A smart pickpocket who will pick 100 cities from your back pocket and call pocket AT and call you and say, Justice or Hello, sir, you dropped your 20 cities. Then you will feel that who is this genuine man mm. giving me eight, like my 20 cities that fell on the ground? Then out of, out of that, you appreciate them by giving the person maybe five cities or 10 cities. Right. Only to get home to realize that the person you thought was generous actually stole 90 cities from your pocket. In other words, what are you talking about? What I'm saying is that in 2019 April, when the Akufuado government introduced the benchmark values, it was because they introduced so many taxes and levies at the ports that it was it led to an astronomical increment in import duties. So in order to paint the picture that they cared about importers, exporters, and all of that, they brought these benchmark values, which affected some items. So that cushioned Ghanaians a little. Mm. So Ghanaians did not feel... 40, 40 something items. Yeah. So 43 items. 43, 40, yeah. 44. Mm. I mean, mm. Ghanaians did not feel the harsh impact of those levies. Two years after elections are over, Akufuado doesn't want re-election. Maybe he doesn't care whether Baumia gets elected or not. Because if he cared, and if Baumia himself cared, the level of corruption and things that we see will not be seeing them. They decided to reverse that. So what it will mean is that the reversal was going to lead to 30 to 50% increment on the import duties of those items. And that certainly will be transferred to you and I. The way you ask them, they say, oh, we want to develop the local industry. We want the industry because Ghana is capable of producing those ones. That's it. Do you know the items involved here? Vehicles. Mm. Vehicles. Do you know how many vehicles are imported into Ghana annually? Which company in Ghana has the capacity to produce this kind of, again, issues of vehicles are issues of taste. They claim that there are companies that are assembling some vehicles here. I wake up today and maybe I want a G wagon. That is what I want to buy. That's what I want to drive. Which company have they empowered in Ghana to produce the G wagon? Before you impose taxes and say we are doing that to protect the local industries. And so, this is a visionless government. Mm. And so that reversal was going to lead to a harsh increment in import duties that will be transferred to the good people of Ghana. But guess what? We spoke about it. Sami Jemfi led a press conference. We kept talking about it. Importers complained. Exporters complained again. As for their communicators and their spokespersons, I don't know. People, people claim, I don't agree, but people claim that they behave like robots. Everything they support. So they went to town supporting it. Oh, the reversal is good. Uh, it's good. The, the removal of the reversal, they did. And the president himself felt that the feedback he was getting on this was so harsh that he needed to direct for further consultations. You know what this means? 
it means that they are also a government that does not consult anyone mm. before implementing whatever policies. How can you even think of that action, that directive, without first consulting importers and exporters and then the traders, the trade unions? This government has lost it. They feel so tied in power already. And we cannot wait to show them the exit in 2024. Right, right. Thank you so much, Adam, for your submission. I think that uh, our time is up. Um, this one, let me read some few of our messages and then wrap up. This one says that community learners should never be exposed to this. They need one thing, stability and education. All right. Uh, Kim sent in that one. Ahmed Barry says some leaders of the uh, striking unions have hypocritical approach with the government hit on the nail or continue to suffer thank you so much for your message um this one says pan-african tv should bring uh <laughs> intellects uh people who can speak to the issues but not politicians uh, who come and do propaganda all right thank you so much uh kenneth uh astra for your message this one says at a basic level the MPP government introduced a new curriculum, but never provided logistics uh, needed to run the curriculum. Thank you so much, Yakubu Paul, uh, for that message. Um, I have lots of this one. Says, uh, this one is from Rahim from Tamale. He says, can we see that things are not going well in Ghana? Strikes here and there, and this means that there is failure in leadership. Okay, right. Thank you so much for your message. Um, hmm. This one says, Pan-African TV, my right choice from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Thank you so much for watching us uh, in Sierra Leone. This one says, local industries need protection from government in the form of tax uh, discriminations, anti-dumping laws, High import duties for close substitute product tax holidays and this benchmark reductions reversals. Um, reversals. In fact, Ghana Poultry Farmers Association has expressed their joy over the benchmark reductions reversals. Regards to Honorable MP and Minister Mavis Hawakumsi. Thank you so much for your message, uh, Sami Kwe. Uh, Samikwe sent in this one. Thank you so much, Samikwe, for your message. Um, uh, sorry, I'll be unable to read all the messages. Adam, your final words, let's go. That is, I cannot end this show without talking about the plight of the NAPCO okay. recruits or trainees. Mm. It is sad. Very sad that. Right. At the time, the president and his family continue to enjoy and spend lavishly the 700 Ghana cities, which barely can cater for these NAPCO recruits. They have failed to pay. Mm. Some of them, for six months, five months, four months, have not received their allowance. They are suffering. They are suffering because sometimes, that's it. Under the impression that you are working. Some even bought car vehicles to their workplace. Some have to go and borrow money to be able to do that for all these months, hoping that when this allowance comes, this meager allowance, mm. they will be able to pay off their loans. They are suffering. Government must pay them now. The insensitivity and the wickedness is too much. Right. I want to use your platform to appeal mm. to the conscience of President Akufado. Dr. Baumia and the finance minister. Right. That enough of the the the, 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 the profligate expenditure. Enough of spending on things that are not productive. Enough of stealing 129000 to to procure Christmas trees for just one company alone. Pay these NAPCO trainees. Pay them. They are suffering. Pay them. Secondly, justice, mm. I want to appeal to the Minister of Education 
that Dr. Edutum, if you cannot do the work, resign. Right. There is too much turbulence Very well. in the educational sector. Mm. Are you aware that in 2021 alone, 44,000 plus teachers resigned from the service? 44,000. What is happening? Are you also aware that since the government changed the curriculum, they have not been able to provide textbooks? What are our kids learning? We have to go. Mm. And so that is the danger of the kind of education that they are serving them. Justice. All of us must add our voice in asking the government that print textbooks. A pastor was telling me recently that he suspects that because we refuse to allow them to print those poor LGBTQ textbooks, you know they came out with some content right. regarding right. that. Let, we let, do not allow let's them. Go let's go, go That is mm. why they have refused to print even the textbooks that the kids need to study. Mm. What kind of wickedness is this in leadership? Right. Okay, those are, those are just allegations uh, that cannot be proven uh, <laughs> anyway, but he has leveled But they have, not, they have not printed the textbooks. This is our time or last on the program. Let me remind you that we have... Uh, we had invited the PR for Ministry of Education to come and respond to some of these issues. Unfortunately, uh, he, he didn't come. But let me also serve a notice to Kwesi Kwatin that this is not uh, the stage at which you feel too big to appear on platforms. Don't forget that you especially started... Especially after you agreed to be exactly, here. Exactly. Especially after you have agreed to be here... Um, and let me tell you, Kwesi Kwati, anybody who is listening, anybody who is watching, who knows Kwesi Kwati, the PR for Ministry of Education, should tell him that he started on this platform. And at least some respect should be given to this platform. And this is not the first time anyway. I've, I've invited him on several occasions where he agreed to appear on the show, but at a later hour, he actually put his phone off so that he could not be reached. Being a PR for Ministry of Education is the least of all things anybody could have thought of. Don't. And once again, you are my friend, and that's how come I'll be so bold and frank to tell you this. Don't feel too big to be appearing on platforms to justify and defend some of your policies, the reasons why you have been appointed as the PR for the ministry. Of course, the issues tabled out for discussion, one of the major issues we had to discuss uh, you know, was actually about education in this country and the current state of the country's educational system. That, this all time will allow us in the program. We get time with us, same time tomorrow. My name is Justice Sapir, and the show has been hot news. Goodbye.